God gave you money and opportunity to increase. God gave you finances and opportunity to give back to his people. It wasn't just for you to be selfish. That's not God's purpose. God's purpose is to not only give you increase, but give you opportunity to give back to his people. Two major questions I'll be answering in this episode of the Seven Figure Scripture Series is, hey, how come I can't get ahead financially? And for those of you who are getting ahead financially, how much is enough? So some Bible basics about money in this episode of the Seven Figure Scripture Series starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, healing to you from the <laughs> last episode here at the Seven Figure Squad current Money Smart Home Office. That's correct. What am I referencing? Well, I want you to see our last video where we announced that we are relocating to Dallas, Texas. That's correct, we made that announcement yesterday in our live video. And thank you for allowing us to cross over 100,000 subscribers and thanking you, we also want to include you. What am I talking about? We've asked many of you to send in a 30 second video saying my name is this, I'm from this area, and the biggest thing, my biggest takeaway from the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel is, so insert that, send us a video, 30 second, 45 second video, send us that video, upload it to YouTube, and then email that link to Ivan. So everybody, this is Ivan, Ivan at sevenfiguresquad.com. Email him your link because we want to include you in our next episode. Also, as a quick reminder from yesterday's announcement, we had three major announcements in yesterday's video. Our next milestone is to hit 150,000 subs. So when we get another 50,000 subs from this YouTube channel, The Seven Fear Squad, we are going to give $5,000 to a church or nonprofit that we all agree upon based on a poll we set up. And by the way, we're looking for your inclusion on it, so put it in the comment section below what type of church or chair we'd like to give this money to. But we've got to hit another 50,000 subs. It's 150,000 subs. We'll give away $5,000 church or charity that we nominate and uh, we're going to vote on in a poll. And then we have another announcement once we get to 150,000 subs. Exciting things happening here, crossing the century mark of 100,000 subscribers here on the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel. And I thank you for supporting this content, for engaging in this content, and also sharing your thoughts about how this channel is helping you in your personal life, in your business life, in your career as an entrepreneur. With that being said, guys, let's get right into it. <laughs> and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel here. So make sure you click notification to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. So two major questions we want to ask and answer in this episode. Why can't I get ahead? Financially speaking, Matt, how come I cannot get ahead? No matter what checks I get, my job, my business, my stimulus check, tax refund, big commission check, sale of my business, how come I just can't get ahead? I'll unpack that here in a second. Number two, how much is enough? Really, what am I going after? Because everybody around me in my church or everybody around me in my religion is telling me just to be content, settle, you know, relax, chill out. So let's unpack those two questions. Oh, number one, why can't we get ahead? Listen, my, my career, 22 years now in financial services. As soon as I got at the Marine Corps, I spent eight years in the Marines. My transition career was, wasn't smooth though. It was the insurance industry because I had three jobs to support me as I built my insurance career, which is a YMCA lifeguard from five to eight o'clock in the morning. My second job while I was getting my insurance career started was an Olive Garden server. And number three was a Jiffy Lube hood technician. As I found those three jobs sufficient enough to pay my bills initially as a single father to, uh, to eventually launch my insurance business. But I've been doing insurance now. I've been doing financial service for 22 years. And the biggest thing I see all the time, I see the biggest thing all the time, when I'm sitting down with customers, when I'm sitting down with clients, I'm seeing husband and wife argue, I'm seeing business partners argue, I see uh, family members argue, okay? It's not necessarily my competition, not necessarily another insurance company. My competition is not another agent. My competition is not a, not a financial services organization. My competition simply is one thing. It's a spiritual battle that they have about money, ma money management. Uh, we talked about uh, many times that people are unaware of where they stand with God. And with that being said, they're unaware about where they stand with their finances with God. And so let's talk about that real quick. And some of you guys would say, well, Matthew, I'm, I'm not a believer. I don't, I don't believe in God. I, I totally get it. But if you're curious to watching this YouTube channel, what does God say about finances? And, and you go ahead and, and research yourself and unpack this yourself. You take some of the notes from this video and, and you do some self-study and get some 
increased self-awareness outside of this video, which I hope many of you do after watching our episodes that uh, we start guiding you in a way that you can start thinking more and more and more for yourself. But let's take a look at this chapter here of the Bible, which is in Luke chapter 14, verses 28 through 30. It reads like this. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays a foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Woo! <laughs> and by the way, it's a tower, in, using this example. What about a business? What about endeavor? Did you not sit down and do the groundwork necessary to make sure, do I have enough financial resources? Do I have the right people? If I need to make a pivot and I had to fire somebody and hire somebody new, can I do that to make sure my project is completed? So do you have a plan? Oftentimes people are just winging their finances. Let's go to this other area in terms of implementation. Once you have a plan, once you devise a plan, what, what does the Bible say about implementing that plan? Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 7, verses 26 to 27. It reads like this. But everyone who hears the words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell with a great crash. See, God talks about people being drifters. You know, we talked about uh, this book, Outwitting the Devil. Let me, let me take it right here. This book, Outwitting the Devil, here written by Napoleon Hill. Okay? And, and people, because they, they don't implement plans because they're embraced by fear versus faith. Because fear is a tool of a man-made devil. Versus following your faith, which is God-made, people sadly oftentimes listen to fear more. And by the way, whatever you listen to the more, whatever you feed more on a daily basis will win. So not only hearing the word, but also doing the word is so important to your relationship with God or is so important to you having the type of money and finances necessary to do what you feel is God work, purposed work in your life. Is the basic practicality, let's take a look at this. Put down on a sheet of paper, put down on a sheet of paper, what is your assets? Things that are of value. You know, it could be simple things such as baseball cards, if you're a baseball card collector. It could be some of the things such as your house, your car, your collectibles, what are your assets, okay? Then subtract it with your liabilities. So another column, so another sheet of paper, right? You're, you're subtracting your liabilities. So if you had a sheet of paper here, right? Assets on one side, liabilities on the other side. So you add up your assets, you add up your liabilities, and then you, you subtract the liabilities from the assets. That equals then your net worth. That is what you are worth. Assets, your 401k plan, your mutual funds, your stocks, your bonds, your life insurance policy, your liabilities, your student loans, your mortgage, your credit cards, your car, pay, your, your car loan, your car payment. Okay? Those are the things that are a part of the liability category. That is your net worth based on what the subtraction is of that column. When I did this basic guesstimation of what my assets were, Subtracted by my liabilities were, you know what I realized? Man, I'm broke. I'm operating at a negative net worth. And I purchased a life insurance policy. I purchased a life insurance policy. Well, great. I got more assets now than liabilities if I die today. So I want to make sure I'm worth more alive today than I am buried in the ground. Because I want to make sure my life is filled with excitement and energy, purpose. And I want to be able to pass it on to my kids. So this all also involves this fancy word we've been discussing in the previous episodes of the Seven Figure Squad. The words about ownership has to also include the word stewardship. Stewardship meaning, is it all yours or is it all God's? Is the money that you have because you created it or because God owns it and he trusts you with it, now you have to steward over it. So those are the conversations that we've been having with a lot of people and some of the easiest ways to make sure you steward well over your money if you want to say, this, this is what I've been entrusted to, or this is what I own, okay? However you are wrestling with those two words right now, okay? One of the easiest ways to determine assets versus liabilities or income versus outflow is very simple software such as Quicken or Mint. These are software programs you can buy, download on your app, on your app store, or download on your phone as an app, and start plugging and connect your bank to it. Or some of these banks already have software included in their bank online uh, websites. But 
If you don't, there's Quicken and there's Mint that tie into your bank software to help you understand the condition of your financial situation. In the Bible, they talked about the condition of your flocks because back then they had herds of sheep, herds of goats. That was money because they'd sell the sheep, they'd sell the goats, it was food. And on top of that, the, 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 the wool on a uh, sheep, that was, that was money, that was valuable back then, right? Goat, goat milk. So these are th things of value, these were money. So the shepherds were responsible for the conditions of their flock. You, because we don't have m money that's sheep and goats today, many of us don't have money that's sheep and goats today. You have to understand the condition of your flock, the condition of your finances, the condition of your money. And this is how God is trying to instruct us how to handle your current situation, your current flock. So the bottom line is good financial stewardship is not only assessing currently and always being on top of what your assets and what your liabilities are, but also bottom line also to increase what God has given you. Increasing your net worth, increasing your finances. Because God didn't give you opportunity and money to fail. God gave you money and opportunity to increase. God gave you finances and opportunity to give back to his people if that's what you feel money is going to do for you. It wasn't just for you to be selfish. It's not God's purpose. God's purpose is to not only give you increase, but give you opportunity to give back to his people. Because money, as we've discovered in a previous episode, money's three things. Money is a tool. Money is also a test to build your character. And number three, money is here to help you build a testimony. The bottom line, guys, God does not want financial drifters, as we discussed here, not winning the devil. He doesn't want you to drift your finances in and out, bounce here, bounce there. You only check your condition of your flocks, the condition of your finances only at the end of the month or at best uh, uh, at the end of every paycheck. He wants you constantly to find ways to increase and also minimize and leave the enemies outside the gates. Next one. So you say, okay, Matt, I get it. I'm getting some traction in my finances. I'm getting some traction of where I'm getting ahead. I started a business. I'm making some money. So how much is enough? Now, I reference a lot from King Solomon of the Bible. I study his Proverbs. I study his Ecclesi book of Ecclesiastes. I read a lot about money and finance. Matter of fact, I get more out of those two books for me when I first started reading the Bible about handling finance than any other chapter in the book for me personally. You go in and, and do your own research. You go out and, and, and seek wisdom uh, on, your, on your own right. But that's where I got a lot of my uh, scenarios from. Because what I'm seeing uh, in the Bible, over 2,000 verses in the Bible, over 2,000, I think 2,350 might, might be the exact number, but over 2,000 verses in the Bible are talked about money. You know, in Jesus' ministry, he talked more about money and handling finances than any other subject outside of love and forgiveness. So when you look about the importance of stewardship, the importance of money, the importance of success in your life, and if you consider having a Bible-centered perspective of where they should go, I think you're going to find a lot of meaning, a lot of happiness and enjoyment, and more importantly, a lot of purpose in what you're doing. So let's take a look at what is enough, how much is enough according to King Solomon. King Solomon says here in Ecclesiastes. Now, when I'm reading Ecclesiastes, it's much different than reading Proverbs. The way I looked at the book of Proverbs for me, my own personal journey, my own personal perspective, Man, King Solomon, boom, boom, boom. And King Solomon is regarded as the wisest and richest king. First is the wisest. Wisest and richest king who ever lived. And man, he was playing offense, man. He was expanding his territory. Boom, he's boom, boom. He's just playing offense. Expanding, growing, expanding, growing. Ecclesiastes was more of, in my opinion, more of a reflective period of his life. And he's sitting on all this wealth, blah, 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 all these different things, the different territories. Here's what he says about money. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2. It reads like this. Meaningless. Meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. <laughs> you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty blunt. There's what you're saying about money. Okay? It's pretty blunt what you're saying about money. So, Matt, is my desire to expand my territory, to know the condition of my flight, is it all meaningless? Well, let's understand the context of what he is saying. So, let's continue on. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 4 through 11. It reads like this I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all my work, and this was a reward for all my labor. Yet, when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had told to achieve, everything was meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained <laughs> under the sun. You know why? Because here's what happened 
in King Solomon's latter part of his life, the reason for his fall, the reason for King Solomon's fall is that he started to drift away from God. He started marrying women that worshiped pagan gods. He started toiling in things that are away from God. He started entertaining himself in things that are away from God. And now he looks back on his life as man. All this stuff is meaningless. He realized that the back part of his life was all going down the drain because he drifted away from God's purpose of his life. Because in the beginning, in Proverbs, man, he's going after, man, going after. Remember King Solomon's first request in his prayer when God asked him when he took over as king, as a young, young teenage boy, what do you want, Solomon? King Solomon, what would you want to rule your land? King Solomon says, man, I don't want money. I don't want armies. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. So now King Solomon here at the back part of his life, he's like, oh, this, all this stuff is meaningless because he drifted away from that wisdom. So let's look at further evidence of that. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 24, verse 26, it reads like this. A man can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in his work. This too, I see, is from the hand of God. For without him, who can eat or find enjoyment? To the man who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinner, he gave the task of gathering, storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. Hmm. Woo! So are you living your life? Are you going about your finances? Are you going about your business? Looking to find a way to please God. Or are you just looking to please yourself? Because pleasing yourself is not wise stewardship. Pleasing yourself is selfish. Pleasing yourself, although important in the meantime, so therefore there's a direction of where that money goes, but if it's just a direction to go back to yourself, correct King Solomon, I have to agree. It is all meaningless. But with that being said, guys, I don't want you to think that, oh, so, so I just should settle. Because one of the biggest words I wrestle with in the Bible, and I'm still growing with this, guys, so please don't judge me on this. And you might, and you might be in this uh, position too as well. And we're all growing through this together. One of the biggest words... I wrestle with it. I'm still seeking wisdom and finding the etymology of this word because I know the Bible gets translated so many, so many uh, different times is the word contentment because the word contentment is used in the Bible and sometimes people use that word as contentment and say, listen, man, I'm making 15 bucks an hour, man. I should just be content. Man, I'm making $100,000 a year, man. I should be content. Man, I'm already a millionaire. I should be content. I should just be happy and based on what God gave me. Well, God gave you a million bucks. You don't think God can give you two million bucks? God gave you two million bucks. You think he can't give you 10 million bucks? So I wrestle with that because when I'm encouraging people, I'm coaching people, people just want to off themselves. Say, you know what? I don't want to get to the next level. I don't want to get to the next level. I am content. So I'm still researching and wrestling with that too as well. And for those of you who are praying top people, consider praying for your brother here uh, about understanding wisdom in that Bible because I want to crack that open. But let's look at what Proverbs chapter 16, verses 3. Again, another chapter of the Bible written by King Solomon uh, written earlier in his life about making sure of what you commit to. Let's read it together, and it reads like this. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. I'll continue on. The Lord works out everything for his own ends, even the wicked for a day of disaster. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. The love and faithfulness sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, a man avoids evil. When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies live at peace with him. Amazing scripture there written by King Solomon. The amazing Proverbs there written by King Solomon here in chapter 16. So I want to share with you a diagram that uh, I see in my life because, you know, I remember uh, uh, serving in the United States Marine Corps. I'm making $20,000 a year. And I'm asking myself what type of impact I made serving in the Marines, uh, 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 fighting in two different combat tours all over the world. What type of impact did I really make serving while wearing a uniform for the United States of America? And um, I think God prepares us for different levels. I believe God prepares us for, uh, uh, for another level to make sure we are prepared financially, emotionally, spiritually, so we can attack the enemies at that next level to obviously give glory to His kingdom, glory to Him, for Him and His purpose. And this diagram that was uh, created by my mentor, Patrick Bedavid, says, listen, if you're at one level, okay, if you're at one level, if you're at this one level, right, and you're just getting started, you're at the bottom 20% of the next level. Your job is to increase, right, 
to get to the top 80% at that level, 90% not 90 level, and you're the top of that next level. But here's the thing, once you get to the next level, okay, once you get to the next level, again, the next level, you're at the bottom of the next 20%, and you gotta do your job to increase what God has given you, proper stewardship, to get to the top of that next level, because God's gonna prepare you for another level. But the next level, guess what? You're also at the bottom of the next level. God's gonna give you no more tools, more opportunities, but you have to increase what you have been given to get you to the top of that next level, so on and so forth. So I'm taking a look at this. Well, if my life, and I realized this early on in my life, wherever stage you are in your life, your job is to increase. Your job as a steward is to say, okay, can I just be content being at the bottom of this level? I don't know. You got you to figure that stuff out. So I'm curious. What do you guys think? Right? If you, if you feel that you want to increase, put in the comment section. I will increase. If you want to get to the next level, I will increase. Put in the comment section below. I want to know what you guys are doing. Or you say, hey, Matt, listen, I just want to make sure I am implementing knowing the conditions of my finances. Put in the comment section. I will know the condition of my finances. Put in the comment section below. What You will increase condition of finance or both. Let me know in the comment section below. I want to know what you guys are implementing from this video. But guys, this is one journey. If there's a clear blueprint that I followed my life, it wasn't follow man's laws, especially when it comes to the subject of money. But I find a lot of enjoyment and contentment and excitement and purpose when I started following God's laws. Maybe something that you should consider for your life if you feel empty inside or something that, man, I just lack the ability to jump out of bed every morning. This might be it because I'm always thinking about getting to the top of my current level so I can attack the next enemies at my next level because that's what I feel as a soldier of God to expand his territory and make sure God's name and message is known throughout this country because right now, the message out there in the marketplace today that's known in the world today, to my, in my opinion, is a word of the enemy, things that keep us down and we need to fight Continue to fight and fight that good fight. And if you want to take a deeper dive into the subject matter, check out this video here of the book of the Bible that made me millions. And over here, the 11 money traps according to the Bible. So that being said, guys, let me know your thoughts, your comments, put it in the comment section below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and subscribe to our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. Again, I want to say thank you to the Seven Figure Squad YouTube community, we are officially over 100,000 subs. I think I even said we're one of uh, 230,000 channels above uh, 100,000 subs. Our next goal is 150,000. As you know, we're gonna give, uh, give uh, $5,000 to our church or charity at that point. And I have another announcement once we hit to 150,000 to get to 250,000, so a lot of things are in store. We got a lot of amazing announcements to share with you, but we gotta get to certain levels. Help us help you. That being said, guys, I'm your Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to smart. Continue love smart and be money smart today. God bless you guys.